Hello. So as a hiring manager, every now and then I spend a good portion of my day reviewing resumes. And trust me, after having reviewed like a couple hundred of resumes, I have found out some very common mistakes that a lot of people do, and that compelled me to make today's video. Okay, so I'm going to start off by letting you in on a little secret. So just between you and I, do you know how much time does it take me to look at a resume and de decide if I might want this person on my team or not? Under a minute. Yes, I'm not kidding. So now I feel it's my duty to share with you what we are looking for as hiring managers and how you can make us want to hire you. So we're going to start off by discussing these common mistakes. So what you should not do. And then we're going to move on to discussing what you should do while creating your resume. So mistake number one, lengthy resumes. Some people think that resumes are an opportunity for them to write an essay about themselves, which is not true. Now that I've already told you the limited amount of time that we have to scan through your resume, do you think we have the time to read each and everything on your resume? So like this one time I have I received a resume that was about six pages. And guess what? This person did not even have any work experience. Now, I know what you're wondering. What did this person even ramble on about in these six pages, right? Well, I don't know because I didn't read it. You know what's the perfect length for a resume? Just one page. Yes, it's possible. And I'll show you how in the next section. Now, if you're as excited as I am for this video, watch the video till the end because I have a very special bonus tip for you at the end, which will increase the chances of you getting hired in 2022. Moving on to mistake number two, which is kind of directly and directly related to mistake number one. Too much narrative and not enough fact. Now, when people say, let your resume tell your story, they don't mean that your resume should read like a magazine. Your resume should be based on artifacts and not just words. It should give us very clear information about your education, your background, your experiences, your projects, the dates, your job titles, your responsibilities. So this information should be very well organized in the sense that it's very easy to locate and comprehend. Mistake number three. Spelling mistakes and grammatical error. So it should be very obvious to make sure that your resume is free of any typos. Well, if you manage to do that, you will have another skill up your sleeve, which is attention to details. And a very common confusion amongst people that I've noticed is with homophones. So homophones are the words that are pronounced exactly the same, but they have a different meaning and also a different spelling. So make sure when you want to say principles in your resume, say principles and not principles. Get that? Mistake number four, lack of customization. One size fits all definitely doesn't work in the world of resumes. You have to customize your resume. You have to tweak it based on the job you are applying for. And how you can do that, I'm going to show you in the next section of this video. Moving on to the last but not the least, mistake number five, failure to highlight achievements over duties. In addition to telling your potential employer what you were obliged to do, make sure your resume showcase what you managed to achieve on your own because you are a motivated individual. Now we're going to discuss the things to do so that your resume stands out. First off, instead of reinventing the wheel and creating the whole format of the resume on your own, I suggest that you use one of the pre-existing templates for resumes. And where can you get that? pretty much anywhere on the internet. No matter what cloud platform or suite you use, for example, Google or Microsoft, if you go to Google Docs, like for example, I use Google. So here on Google Docs, you can see a lot of uh, templates available to you, right? And these are the templates available for resuming. You can select one of these templates and just edit it out to fill in your information and then build your resume based on this template. Now, this gives you a lot of advantages. It saves you time. It gives you the format, which is preset. So now you are actually forced to put all the information in this given format. So it's just one page. As a result, it makes your resume very crisp and concise. Next, don't forget to include links to your relevant profile that you feel showcase uh, your professional work. For example, the link to your GitHub profile, link to your LinkedIn profile, a link to, let's say you write articles on medium.com. So a link to that profile and any other relevant links. Now, remember your resume was supposed to be based on artifacts and not just words. This gives the hiring manager a chance to associate a face to just words and a profile. The hiring manager get to see all the good work that you've done. They get to know you a bit better 
better, which in turn gives you an edge over your competitors. Next, include buzzwords in your resume. Now, there are certain trending words going around for each industry at a certain moment in time. Make sure you include those buzzwords in your resume. And also, remember we talked about how to customize your resume based on the job you're applying to. So a good approach would be when you see a job description, you spot certain keywords that are repeating over and over again, and also some skills that are mentioned in the job description, and you might possess them, but not necessarily have mentioned them in your resume. So make sure you take those keywords and make sure you put them in your resume, right? So what would happen is now if your resume is not being scanned by an actual human and it just gets through a machine, So these machines have certain specific algorithms that will try to find these keywords in your resume. And if there is not a certain percentage of match, your resume will be rejected. No matter how good you are, because it's just a machine, it doesn't possess the emotional intelligence to scan your resume and make sure that you're a good fit for this job, right? All it works is based on a stupid algorithm. So make sure you're smart enough to beat the algorithm. Now, another important thing is to put your skills on the top. Now that you know that we have just like 10 to 15 seconds to scan through each of the sections on your resume, it's very important that you give this kind of convenience to the hiring manager that their eyes are easily able to spot what they're looking for. Additionally, do not underestimate soft skills. There's a lot of resumes that I see are filled with technical skills, but have no mention of soft skills whatsoever. You know what? Even if you lack a couple of technical skills, it's not a big deal because they can be learned eventually. But soft skills are really important because having the right attitude, having the right mindset is really important from day one. And it can it's not something that can be taught. So the hiring managers really want to make sure that the person they're targeting has the right qualities of being a team player, of being a leader. Now, depending on which point in your career you are, you could either be a fresher or an experienced individual. So your resume should cater to the back and should be shaped correctly. Let's talk about experienced individual first. So if you are an experienced individual, make sure you highlight your experience just next to your technical and soft skills with clear dates, clear responsibilities, and clear job titles. And again, showcase any achievements or even any volunteering experience that you have outside of work because you want to show them that you have a life outside of work and you are really motivated and you love what you do. Okay, so for freshers, While creating your resume, I understand that the biggest fear that freshers have is the lack of experience. But don't worry, I have a great tip for you. You can compensate this lack of experience with a lot and lot of projects. Tell us about your school projects and also any hobby projects that you've been working on. Don't hesitate to include them. You know what? Those projects work even better. Even if the projects you started are not completed, don't worry. Just make sure you upload these projects onto your GitHub profile or any other version control system that you prefer or you use. And as we discussed before, you're already providing a link to this profile in your resume, right? So the hiring managers can see your work. Now, a great platform where you can collaborate with people, learn something new, and also work on a project together is Hackathon. Hackathons are these two to three days coding events which are organized by universities, different schools, or companies where you can participate if you're in a school or even if you're working and then work on projects collaboratively. Also, there's a lot of companies participating in these events. They're organizing conferences, giving talks, and also looking for talented individuals that participate in these events. And then you can exchange your resumes and that leads to a lot of job opportunities. Then of course, there's this learning aspect as well. Now you also have a project that you can mention in your resume, and you also have an experience that you can mention in your resume. And that shows the hiring managers that you're motivated to learn and build cool stuff outside of your school curriculum as well. And of course, internships also count. So if you have any internship experience, don't forget to mention that in your resume as well. Oh, that was a lot of information, but the journey doesn't end here. And now is the time for that bonus tip. I'm going to give you that as soon as you hit that like button. Done? Okay. So now that you have the perfect resume ready, use this resume to update your LinkedIn profile if you already haven't done so. Now, every time you apply to a job opportunity using this perfect resume of yours, make sure you know the name of the hiring manager or the person who posted this job on LinkedIn or any other platform. Find this person, send them a request to connect with them, 
and let them know that you're interested in this XYZ position that they've posted and you've already applied to it. They'll for sure appreciate you going that extra mile. And now they know you, they have your name, they have access to your LinkedIn profile, which is basically your second resume. So even if your resume gets rejected by like an automated machine or an algorithm and it never gets to that hiring manager, you've at least increased your chances of getting into the system because now the hiring manager has access to your profile directly. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for making it till the end of the video. I hope you learned something useful from my experience. And if the answer is yes, go down in the comment section and let us know how it worked out for you. And you'll see that we've put a link to a resume template down in the description below so you can use it to build your next resume. So don't forget to check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.